Hi guys, welcome to this session on Microsoft Physio. In this module, I want to have a look at a basic flow chart. So under the new option, you can see I've got a flow chart there. So I'll just click on that. And then you have these four options. I'm going to select the blank one and then create. So you get a screen with all the flow chart options already. There's, there's one of the stencils. You've got quick shapes cross-functional flow chart shapes and then basic flow chart shapes so let's just get going so pull the shape onto the screen and that is the start and then you get these little arrows coming out where you can access these other shapes very quickly so I'll go for a process and then a decision now when you have a decision you've got a yes usually a yes or no or a question so let's put a, a process out that way and a process underneath so very quickly you can create a flow chart using these tools. It's automatically connecting up. And if it doesn't connect up on the home tab, you've got the option to put a connector in yourself, um, which is what I'm going to do here actually, because I want to, if this one is the end of a process, they have to go back to the beginning. And then I'll just make that a thicker line Click on that line and just make it thicker and a different color. So make it red, make it thicker, and I'll make it dashed. I didn't do the color for some reason. Red. Okay, so that's how you can do that. Now, if the shape that you want isn't in one of these options that come up at the bottom there you can actually just drag and drop a shape on there so if i want this one for example i'm not sure if that's in there that's in there anyhow so let's go for a document so i put a document there and there's no connector to it so let's just put a connector to that one so that's what you have to do if it isn't one of the default ones put the pointer tool back on and let's come down a bit more, a few more shapes. Now, okay, there we go. Let's have another decision and coming out of the side, coming out of the bottom. And now I want to go to a second page. So what I need is one of these off page reference tools. So I'll, I'll use this one, just drag that on. If I put it over there and it links to a page number two in this case we've only got one page so it's number two but if you did have existing pages they would be listed there but i'll just leave it on that one click ok and then you can continue with your flowchart same thing right so i'll go back to page one because on page one there's certain things you can do you might have several shapes or processes that you want to be grouped together or always grouped together so you can do stuff like this uh, i've already showed you how you can i well, shown you how you can put a line back so there needs to be a line here going back up the top uh, but if you wanted these to be in a group we can put a container around these so if i go onto the the insert tab you've got the container option and you can pick uh, any of these fancy containers before I click on one, I need to be on some shapes. So let's just highlight these three shapes. Let's say you want these to be in a container. So I'll click on this one, nice and fancy. So they're now in a container, but at the moment I can I can still, I can move them around as a group, but I can still move these shapes out of this container. If I click on a shape, if I move that, it's out of the container. I'll just put that Control Z back into it. But what you can do is, you can go to the former option for the container and lock the container. So now when I try and move that out, instead of moving it out, it will just make the container bigger, like so. So the container you can then move as a block. So I'll just move that as a block just to show you how that, how that would work. And then bring that back to where it was. And you can resize it you can give it a heading um, I'll call this school like so 
just move that across a bit. Now in each of the, these, this is the start of the project, so I'll just type um, start or start the process. And this one, let's um, call this induction. This is the induction process. And what you can show in each of these boxes is what's called shape data. So if I go to the view, uh, the data tab first actually, and tick shape data on, you get this on the right hand side comes out, the shape data. You can also get shape data by right clicking on a shape and going into data and then shape data. Doesn't matter which way you do it. But you can see that on a flow chart, on a basic flow chart, there are already shape data processes there which you can utilize and fill in. And if you want, you can add another one, but you, if you're gonna add other ones, you want to do it in the document stencil so it's already there. So you don't have to keep repeating yourself. But if I right click and just right click on that one, go to data, define shape data, just to show you where that is. You've got the option there for new and I'll put salary on there. No, not salary, that doesn't make sense. Um, department, de debt, that's gonna be a string. Format is just gonna be normal value. That's everything could stay the same. You can put a prompt in there. Department's fairly straightforward, but if I click OK, you see it comes out at the bottom there. Now, I'm not going to fill all of this in for this little demonstration. I'm just going to go through the basic layout and structure. But what you can do there is you can put a cost, for example, in there. Let's put 2000 as a cost of that induction process. Now, another feature that you've got on the data tab is advanced data graphics. So you can have a little icon so I'm just going to create a new one new item and then you choose the field that you want so a cost field and you select the type you want so I want an icon and then these are all the different icons you've got scroll down there serious faces so I'd, I'm just going to leave it on the top three and I'm going to put this in there so this cost if this cost is greater than 1000 I want that to be a cross if it's um, less or equal to 500 I want it to be a green tick and if it's over 500 greater than 500 it can have this nondescript dash you click OK to that and OK again and yes and you get that little cross if I just make my screen a little bit smaller so now what you can do is you can highlight the rest of these shapes and click on the data graphic and you can see that they've all got ticks on because there's actually no cost in there. But if I put a cost in there of 554, that gets the dash and click on that one. If I put 334, that's a tick. And if I put that one to 3000, that's going to be a cross. So that's how the data graphics feature works. Now this off page reference that I did, you can just click on that, double click on that, should I say, and it bounces through a hyperlink to each page. And this, we can do the same on this one. We can put a container on this one. Container like so move the container down and then just lock the container so they the, those shapes will always move together within the container if you move the container that is instead of the shape so i'll move this container they go around together as a group if i come back onto the first page and go to the design tab you've got all these different designs which changes the color scheme of all your shapes and on some of the designs you've got variants, different variants you can select like this. It seems to me to be a bit of an overkill on these sort of things in, in all Microsoft programs, but I'll just show you that they're there. You've also, that is terrible, you've also got um, layout options if you want. If I go over here, we can play around with the different layouts on this um, chart. And you can see how the how the 
different styles will impact these shapes and they're all pretty straightforward in how they sit now if I go to the um, shapes and want I want some sort of numbering system on these shapes sort of like an order you can actually um, number shapes but before I do that I want to have a look at this on the process area tab this check diagram because this is quite um, a useful tool so it's already got rules to check flow charts so you just check diagram and it'll come up with loads of information telling you that you've made a mistake or that's not correct no connectors on that shape um, well that's okay because that's just a an off-page reference shape it has no text labels here there's no text in these shapes and lots and lots of information there some of it's obvious there's no end there's no end to this flow chart I didn't do an end shape but I'll just I've just put that on to show you that now on the on the view tab you've got add-on at the end and you've got visio extras where you can click on number shapes why that's drilled down like that I'm not sure but here we go so you can manually do it or auto number I'm going to manually do it so if you probably let's click OK it's going to increment by one start at one interval one OK so you basically got to click on the first shape first shape second third fourth fifth and so on just go through it clicking on the shapes as you as you want them to be and then on to the next page but I'll just close that for now because that's how you do that and if I make that a little bit bigger you can see that that's numbered them if you do it wrong you can just go back into it and reset so back to the data option so we've gone through data graphics now any shape you bring on from now on if I bring another process on well let's just go into here and um, add one on you can just apply that to it it's already set and if you put the cost greater than the less than 500 that will go for that one which is what we told it to do we've also looked at the putting a container on any containers that you you want so we'll just put a container on that one and then you must lock the container otherwise you can just move it about so now that's in a container by itself and you can give it a heading call it test we've looked at shape data and we've added an extra um, on this one we did somewhere department find it there so we've added an extra department you can see the number has come up as extra information in the shape data now and the numbers come up so I'll just put sales on there anything you've got in um, shape data you can export to um, Excel out as a table in Excel so if you filled all these in with some information in, change these names if you want and filled it in you can then export it out through reports into Excel so let's have a quick recap of what we looked at so we've looked at containers we've played around with the designs um, we looked at data we've done shape data we've done advanced data graphics under process we looked at check diagram under review we didn't look at anything and view we've looked at the different um, task panes and visio add-ons visio extras so that's basically all I want to talk about on this particular session on a basic flowchart diagram in Microsoft Visio. So hopefully you found that useful. Thank you for your time.